three, two, one, go. Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Montreal Canadiens franchise series here on the channel. We started year three. Uh, last episode, we took care of the off season as well as one month into year three. We're on November 1st, 2021. And uh, if you guys haven't seen the last episode, we made a couple changes to our decor. Uh, that was obviously the thumbnail of the previous episode. We acquired Brendan Montour, replaced Petrie with Brendan Montour, only 27 years old. And then we also got Jonas Brodin here on the left hand side. So our decor, in my opinion, looks a lot better. Obviously, Shea Weber is dropping 36 years old and he has a few more years to go at a uh, 7.8 so five more years so hopefully he retires sooner rather than later we also have call caulfield here 82 uh overall nick suzuki as well and dano at 86 so we're looking at some growth out of these players as well especially even ryan paling and all those guys and then carry price is dropping slowly but um yeah that's that's basically the situation going into the second month of year three other players that we're looking to grow in the ahl are yelling in here and then on the data and off sergey data 19 years old top four d-man so those are the players here that we have uh basically that we're looking for some growth out of uh let's see I don't think really I need to do anything else. We started pretty decently in the last episode, seven, four, and two, uh, six, three, and one in our last ten. So let's just get into simulating here a home game against the Arizona Coyotes. Six, five, and three for the team um, in Arizona. Let's just do the slow simulation to see how our team is simulating. First period, one, one, Ekman Larson and Max Domi. It looks like Brian Elliott's on in the net for uh, the Coyotes. They're definitely out shooting us, though, so we definitely need a better second period. Okay, 2-2. Two, two. Cole Caulfield scores. They're doubling the shots um, compared to us, but we need a big third here. And we don't. Connor Garland, they completely killed us there as far as dominating the play. 45-20 to 20 the shots. Not what I wanted to see. 7-5-2. and two. Uh looks like Carey Price had a lot of shots against, but because um, you guys saw there that his, um, what's it called? His ice, his morale went up due to ice time, but that's not good because we lost the game. So 7-5-2, and two, we're third in our division. Can we beat the Pittsburgh Penguins here? We do in overtime, and we also beat the New Jersey Devils. So two big overtime wins here. And we shut out the Edmonton Oilers, the Stanley Cup champions. We do lose against the Leafs, so can we bounce back? And we don't 10, 7, and 2. Can we end the week here in style against the Wings? Okay, we do. We were sitting at 24 points, but we've played a couple more games than the rest of the teams. 11, 7, and 2. Let's see how good our teams are doing, or I mean our players are doing. Let me see. Yeah, second in our division, like I was saying. Ryan Dezingle's killing it, it looks like right now in the second line here we definitely need a lot more out of our first line though Kakaniemi's not producing Jonathan Dres not producing either Gallagher either so it looks like it's mainly your second line who's producing a lot more Cole Caulfield eight goals in 20 games so he's our top goal scorer I believe yeah pretty self-explanatory let me just go and check uh the line see if I can maybe make some tweaks so we can get our first line going. So just give me a second here, guys. Here, guys. All right, guys. Made a small little change here on the power play. We were kind of lacking a shooter. Um, obviously, Duran's listed as a playmate or as a sniper here. But I don't know if he's a real uh, sniper, like I was saying. So we're lacking a shooter. I think if we put Cole Caulfield here with uh, Kyle Kanyemi and Duran, who has really good passing stats as well. This can uh, maybe work out. I'm thinking maybe even uh, moving Gallagher here. Or yeah, maybe try this. See if uh, it gives us better results. We have two playmakers in Kalkaniemi and Domi. And then a couple snipers in uh, Drank. And 
what's it called and Cole Caulfield so let's just try and simulate here let's do a slow simulation see how we do against the Columbus Blue Jackets in Columbus they're a pretty good team they're on top of the Metro so this is gonna be a big challenge here first period okay 1-1 one, one. Charles Udo and New Devara score second period 2-1 for us Jonathan Dre it doesn't say if it was on a power play or not but nice to see your first line step up here and then we lose okay so Carey Price once again chokes it looks like two goals in the third I don't know what to say here pretty annoying uh, we had the lead going into the third and then we just blow it but we're still sitting second in our division but it's definitely tightening it's getting a lot tighter now um, we have another what's it called we have another game yeah two games and two nights but we lose the other game it looks like uh, Dell was in net yes Perry Kakaniemi uh, wants to talk uh, he's sorry about how he's playing out there so yeah that we definitely need a lot more out of yes Perry Kakaniemi uh, let's not say yes Barry, well I don't think you have been performing up to expectations you shouldn't beat yourself up about it any suggestions that we can help you with although you haven't been performing I'm confident in your abilities and know that you'll get out of it so let's do that thank you for the vote of confidence I appreciate it I'm glad we're on the same page so hopefully his morale can go up or at least stay the same so it looks like it's gonna stay the same we're looking out of some growth though out of Kakanyemi and um, we went against the Hawks as well, and then Dano also has um, something to talk about. It's the same thing. And we're going to say, uh, oh, I missed it. He said something about, uh, I completely missed it. Sorry, guys. He said something about how he disagreed, and maybe I was the one who was in the wrong, which is kind of funny. But Max Domi now has the same thing. Uh I'm, we're just going to say the same thing as Cockney, I mean, to see what he says. So he disagrees. You need to figure out this one out. I can't really say anything. Maybe you're right, but I'm not certain that I can snap out of this. So his morale might go down, unfortunately. But, yeah, like I said, it will go down. But, I mean, I'm just trying to be positive with these players and try to get them going. But we win 7-2, and we win again. So we've won four games straight. So hopefully our players can start... Um, having better morale there, 16, 10, and 2 were first in our division with 34 points. And our division is not the best, but uh, we already have 10 points, like I'm or 10 losses, like I'm saying. But um, let's see how our team is performing as far as the first line and everything. So, Brendan Gallagher's back uh, to being our leading point scorer, which was the same thing as the beginning of the episode. Uh, Dre has 20 points, okay, so he, it looks like he's picking it up a little bit. Dezingle, Domi, Kakaniemi, Caulfield's up to 10 goals now. He looks like he's slowed down a little bit. Uh, Dano's up there as well. So our team is doing a little bit better. Uh, obviously, that winning streak helps. Let's see how our power play is doing compared to the rest of the teams here. Goals per game, we are we're not the greatest for goals per game. Even in our division, we're... We are last in our division. Okay, goals four per game. We're last in our division, so that's not good at all. Let's see in the entire league how, where we're sitting. Yeah, we're not scoring enough. And we even had one game that we scored, I believe, like seven goals. So we're definitely in the in the top or in the bottom third of the league for sure. So let's see what's, um, what's not working with us. So power play percentage. It looks like it's the power play 13.5. That's not good enough. So let's see where we're sitting here, 13.5. Yeah, so we're also at the bottom of the league. I should have checked that before I made any changes, but it looks like Gallagher is up to an 85 again, so that's nice to see. Um, and yeah, hopefully we can rectify the slow start as far as uh, goal scoring and the power play. So let's just simulate a couple more weeks, see how we're going to be doing. Uh, in these next two weeks, we have a bunch of games, especially next week here. So the scout is calling me. We lose 6-2, okay? Not what I wanted. We lose in a shootout. So Ginning and Josh Brook for Sammy Vatnin. Let's see how good Vatnin is. I mean, this Ginning guy, I'm looking maybe to trade because he doesn't even play in our AHL. He's a top four medium. He has decent potential, but 
he doesn't play in the AHL, and Vatnin's 83, 30 years old, I'm gonna have to decline that, but yeah, if I can get someone maybe for a playoff push with that Ginning guy, that might be good, Keenan Flurry for John Moore, a third and a fourth, no thank you, I think our decor is decent, we just maybe need someone for the second line, a little bit better than um, Ryan Dezingle there, so a bunch of losses there, Brandon Montour has been injured with a fractured jaw, let's just replace the player really quickly here, I think we have a bunch of uh, D-men waiting to play here. Let's see. Yeah, we have Snuggerud, actually. So let's just substitute Snuggerud into the lineup. And yeah, we win. Um, I think it was like 4-3 three, three against the Caps. 18-13-3. and three. Petretti has been traded. 84 overall Petretti has been traded to LA for Alec Martinez. Okay. We lose 5 nothing. Okay, so looks like we're still struggling to score. Let me see if there are any players that we can get that are on the trade block because it looks like we're battling for a play or, um, wild card position right now, which is not ideal. Let me see if there are any players that we can trade or that are on the trade block that we can maybe bring to the team here. So let me just go and browse the trade block really quickly. Because, yeah, we definitely need to make the playoffs this season. Uh, enough of missing the playoffs every two years in a row. That's not acceptable. So, Tori Krug is on the block here again. Sam Reinhardt. So, what happened with Sam Reinhardt? Why is he on the block? Let's see. Trade for asset. I wonder if it's because... Oh, he makes $8.2 million. No, thank you. And he's not performing at all, so... Well, he's not performing up to his contract. He's performing decently. I think he had like 25 points in 30-something games. But for an $8 million contract, I don't think that's um, that's good enough. So let's just see the Calgary Flames. They don't have anyone. No one here. Andrew Shaw, no, thank you. It's definitely going to be hard to find some... Uh, good players as far as forwards like a top six forward right now on the trade block but we just gotta do our due diligence and look for them i don't think there's gonna be too too many though so well, let's just have a look and see if we can find anybody tatars back on the block okay no one too too crazy though Oh, Elias Pedersen's on the block. What the hell's going on here? Why is he so bad right now? Let me see here. Is Why are these guys like on the block and their overalls are so low? 83 still. I don't understand what's going on. If we could trade him for Max Domi or something. It'd have to be Domi and someone else. Or something else, sorry. Yeah. Uh, elite high. This guy is not. Um, well, how good has Domi been so far this season? Twenty-four points, so or twenty-one points, so not great. Uh, now that he's been moved to the second line, so <sighs> this would be a gamble, though, guys. If I did something like that, Domi and uh, first rounder for Elias Pettersson, you guys let me know if you think I should do that. Elias Pettersson has 23 points, so not much greater than uh, Domi, but I mean, maybe a change of scenery for both of those guys could do wonders. We would obviously lose our first round pick because uh, Pettersson's younger, but um, you let me know what you think about this. It might just be overplaying it and it might not be worth it. I think we just need a better player uh, than Dezingle, in my opinion. So, Ehlers is on the block, too. Wow, that's crazy. Comrie, Wheeler, all right. I don't know what's going on with all these players and their overalls. Um, Mark Stone, even, is on the block. Yeah, their overalls being affected. Like, Ehlers shouldn't be an 81. I think he should be much better than that. Let's see. Is he medium elite? I think he should be at least 87, in my opinion. Yeah, he's medium elite. He's just not performing, it seems like. Um, 
Let's see who we can trade here. Uh, Demon. It'd have to, is it is this the Ginning guy that we signed as a free agent? Yes, it is. Okay, so it'd have to be like Ginning, and then obviously a roster player. So I don't know who would it have to be. The single. I'm just trying to do this um, this trade in my head here. So so it looks like Suzuki went up by one. That's nice to see. But uh, let's see. I mean, Dezingle's worth a little bit more, and he's only signed for one year. So if we did Dezingle, getting and like a second or something, let's try that. They want our second, so let's try that. Getting Dezingle and um, a second for Nick Ehlers. Trade accepted. Okay, wow. I didn't think this was going to go through, but I'm glad it did. Let's just try that. On behalf of the Winnipeg Jets, I accept your trade offer. We'll see you out on the ice. So we got Nicholas Ehlers for a player that we signed just for one season in, um, what's it called, in uh, Ryan Dezingle. And then we also traded a player that wasn't being used on the, um, where is Dezingle? Or where is this guy? Sorry. Uh. Ehlers, what is he? Is he a right winger? Oh, there he is. Sorry. Okay, so he's an 86. Wow, that's good, good news here. That's insane, guys. All right, so he's probably probably going to be playing on the first line now. Uh, let me see here. Or maybe on the second line. We'll see. Let me just fix the lines really quickly. This is a huge pickup for us, in my opinion. On the second line, we have a player that only makes, is 25 and only makes uh, $6 million for the next four years. That's a pretty good steal, I think. So, I mean, we could do that or this. So, how good is, uh, what is Ehlers actually? He's a playmaker. Okay, so we can do two, blue, two playmakers and a sniper with Dre. Or we could do two playmakers and a and a sniper with Cole Caulfield. So let's just put him on the second line for now and see what um, what happens in the future here. So let me just move Domi to the second line here. And I think this looks way better, guys. Kalkaniemi, Ehlers, Caulfield, Durant, and Weber. Let me just fix all the extras for a second here, and I'll bring you guys back once I have that ready. Give me a second here. Give me a second here. All right, guys, after acquiring Nick Ehlers, I think this is definitely going to help our goal scoring woes here uh, moving forward into the season. Uh, we're going to keep Gallagher on the first line like I was showing you, and we're just going to have Ehlers play as uh, the second liner in place of Ryan Dezingle, and uh, we'll see how he does. Hopefully, he can feed the puck to uh, Cole Caulfield. So first period here. One nothing down. Logan Brown scores on Price. Second period. Come on, boys. Okay. And we lose 3-2. Are you kidding me? Domi scores for us, and Snugger Rudd scores for them. So I don't know what's going on with our team. We just can't seem to score for some reason. We're still battling for, battling for a playoff position, I should say, but it's, we're getting a lot of regulation losses, like I was saying. So we we got to start turning around here. I made my move. I need the players to start showing me that they want to play. So Dadunov for Hamannik, a third and a fourth. No, thank you. We win 5-4, though, in overtime against the Buffalo Sabres. Can we beat the Carolina Hurricanes? We do. Perfect. Okay, so he wants to speak about his ice time concerns. Right now, I do not feel like playing 14-39 is enough ice time given my abilities. And we should be playing you more. Okay, let's see if he says something. I like the sound of that. I expect that more average for the next few games. Okay, promise. So let's give him uh, more ice time. Okay, let's just end this conversation. I don't have time for that. So Ehlers' morale went up by two. That's good. He's a new player, so we're definitely trying to make him happy. We've won two games straight, though. So next time we lose, um, okay, Nick Ehlers once again. Uh, let's just try and make him feel good and tell him that Maybe you're right, but I'm not certain that you can say, okay, let's just disagree. Oh, my God, this is so annoying. It's the same things every time. I'm 
Next time I do uh, franchise mode, I don't think I'm going to keep the morale on. But we've won three games straight. Uh, Brandon Montour is back, so life is good. Let's see how good um, Ehlers has done so far. Our team has definitely done a lot better, though. But Ehlers, since he joined the Montreal Canadiens, he has three points in five games. That's not terrible. Uh, Cole Caulfield, let's see how many goals he has. 15 goals, so it looks like he's starting to turn it, turn it around a little bit more. Let's just bring Montour back into our lineup here. We definitely need him as soon as possible. We need to keep winning here. 22-16-3. Okay, we finally lose against the Vegas Golden Knights. We have 47 points, so we're battling the top teams in our division uh, coming into January here. Um, yeah, we're in January. Sorry, I just wanted to make sure. So it looks like Nick Ehlers has had a pretty good start so far. Uh, Gallagher has 30 points. Let me actually just try and uh, move Ehlers up to the first line. Uh, let's see how good he's been since he's joined the Montreal Canadiens. So is it three points? Four points in six games, so not awful. Uh, but I'm going to try this now. Caulfield's up to an 83, so that's nice to see. But let, let me just try this. Kakanyemi, Ehlers, and Durant. Uh, why is Ehlers playing so little, though? That's my main question. Uh, it's okay. I definitely need to put Ehlers on the 4-on-4 four four power play here. And then... Let's not... Let's maybe not have Caulfield. Uh, let me just have Caulfield here instead as a right winger. 83. He's on the come up, it looks like, so... It's really nice to see. So we have Ehlers on the 4-on-4 four four power play and then the first line power play as well. So let's see how the next maybe like four or five games go. If Ehlers is producing more than a point per game or something, we can. Uh, it's fair to say that Ehlers belongs on the first line here. So Shea Weber has been injured with a pool groin. That's annoying. Let me just uh, do the line changes here really quickly. So moving everybody up, and then Snuggerud's going to come and join the team. Hopefully he can uh, play as well as he did last time, because I'm pretty sure he scored last game. So 4 nothing. Tim Heat, okay. So let's see how good Tim Heat is. He has one more year left, 78. No, thank you, actually. If he is maybe 80, I would be more tempted to get him, but he's only 78. So we lose 6-2. Okay, can we beat the Tampa Bay Lightning here? 7-2 win, perfect. 24-17-3. A lot of regulation losses, though, which I don't like. Two two losses in a row there, so not good at all. Nick Ehlers is upset you broke your promise. I didn't break my promise. I gave him more ice time. <sighs> Are you kidding me? I put him on the first line, and he's still getting pissed about it. So let's see how good he's been doing since. Okay. The first line looks like it's not producing, so anything so Shea Weber is back though but our team has been losing a lot so let me see how good Ehlers has been so far uh since moving up he had four points in uh six games so no I'm gonna move him down again and then we're gonna have Caulfield here so let's just stick to our guns stick to what we were doing before and uh yeah let me just bring Weber back here so he's uh, he's down to an 84 now so that's awful. This might be a reason why we're losing so much. Dadanov, Millen, Fairbrother in the seventh for Tatar. No, thank you. But uh, yeah, if we're still battling a play for a playoff position in the month of February and then Weber keeps decreasing, he's going to have to go. I don't think he's worth uh, the amount of money that he has. So Jonas Berdina has been injured with a mild concussion. Head coach replaces player. We'll just do that. A third and Yakupov, no, okay. Are you kidding me? Okay, this is why I don't know why I'm getting so many um I don't know why I'm getting so many morales after in the first two seasons that seasons I didn't have any morale uh things to go through, so it's kind of annoying, but let's just keep simulating here. Brodin is back, so let me just uh put him into the lineup here. Let's see how good Ehlers has been doing since. So it looks like he's playing way better with Cole Caulfield. So 
yeah, he's definitely a better player with Cole Caulfield on his line. So let me just add uh, Brodeen here. And let me fix this as well. Montour on the first or on the second pairing D-man. So 26, 20, and 4. We've played a lot of games though. So fair brother for Delzato. No, thank you. But yeah, like I was saying, we've played a lot of games, it looks like. So where are we sitting in the standings here? Uh, right now still battling for a playoff position but uh, the Panthers have played less games than us and the top teams looks like they've played less games than us so uh, I might cut it short pretty soon here um, because I don't want to go too too crazy and then us be out of the playoff spot or playoff position right away or something so let me see. Actually, let's check how good um, Ehlers is. I wonder if his trade value has gone up. So, still an 86. A little bit lower than Domi, though, even though he's an um, medium elite. So, that's kind of weird. And I don't know if Domi was always an 86 or he was an 87. But, yeah. That's all right. Let's see where Weber is. He's a top six. So, let's see if we can find a trade for Weber. No trades found. Okay, so that basically tells you how he's viewed around the league. If we can find a trade for him, if we're still losing, we, we will for sure. But um, I don't want to make a, rad, a crazy decision right away uh, so quickly. So let's just simulate a couple more weeks here. See how our team is doing with Nick Ehlers on the second line. That and all for John Merrill. No, thank you. 4-3 loss. In OT, I don't know if we lost against uh, the Leafs, but uh, Boston acquired or Boston traded TJ Brody for Sorella third and two thirds. So we did lose there. That's annoying. Nikkeler, Nikkeler sounds fair to me. Okay. Let me just uh, see what I can do. So let me actually see how much, how many minutes Ehlers is playing after this uh, simulation is done here. So 27, 21, and 5. 29, 21, and 5, it looks like. So, three wins in a row there. That's nice to see. Another win against the Jets, it looks like. Uh, 30, 22, and 5. So, it looks like we this winning streak has been good for us. Uh, we're still battling a playoff position, though. So, Or for a playoff position, I should say. So, let's not get too, too cocky here. But it looks like the Nick Ehlers trade has definitely helped us out a lot. So, what I wanted to see was uh, Ehlers ice time. I think he was at 14 something before with us. So he he's almost a point per game. So this guy's killing it on the second line. I'm not going to move him up or down or anything. Uh, he's at 19.14. So he was playing at 14 before, but now he's almost at 20 minutes a game. So I don't know what he wants. Uh, Cole Caulfield has 22 goals, so that's nice to see. He only plays 15 minutes, but he's a rookie. Almost 40 points. Um so far this season, how good is Kakaniemi doing? I think he's 38. Okay, nice. Definitely need a little bit more out of Kakaniemi though, uh, especially seeing how good Gallagher has been. 36 or 46 points in 57 games. How good has Jonathan Drain been? It looks like he's always up there, but we need a lot more out of the Jonathan Drain, Kakaniemi for sure. Um, let's just keep going here. And simulate another couple weeks. Our team has been doing decent uh, since the Nick Ehler straight, I, I would say. So uh, we only have maybe one more week to go, and then I might end it there because I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to go too, too crazy and then us fall out of the playoff position. So we beat the Washington Capitals on the first game of the back to back. They're really good, so it's nice to see. Uh, Edmonton Oilers have fired. The coach, okay. Dadunov and a six for Tatar and a seventh. No, thank you. So, like I was saying, we win one against the Caps. We lose another. Uh, okay, so many freaking trades here. Can we win against Dallas? We do 2-1. Perfect. All right. 32-23 and one. Or in five, I'm sorry. We have a uh, game against the St. Louis Blues now. It's going to be pretty tough because they're also battling for a playoff position. I think they have... The two, yeah, they have a, one of the wild card positions there. Uh, so yeah, it looks like it's pretty tight in the Atlantic as well. And those uh, regulation losses, like I was saying, 
kind of hurting us a little bit. Um, but yeah, let's just make sure that carry price is in net, and then we're gonna simulate this last game of the season, and then I'm gonna let you guys go. So yeah, price is in net. Gallagher is up to an 85 again. Um, Ehlers is an 86, like I was saying. Third line looks good. Lekkonen is up to an 80. Same with Paling and Armia. So all 80s on the fourth line. Weber is down to an 83. Are you kidding me? This I've never seen a player go down so fast during a season. It's pretty ridiculous in my opinion. But let me see if there are any D-man on the block here. So, yeah, Hampus, Hampus Lindholm's on the block. Manson's on the block. I don't know if I'd be comfortable getting any of these guys, though. Uh, let's see. Yossi's on the block. Let me just check to see if any team would be even interested in Shea Weber because his trade value keeps going down. Flames are interested. Okay. Uh, Carolina. Chicago. The Avalanche, or Columbus, Dallas. So there are some teams that are interested in Shea Weber, but um, yeah, I'm not sure. Looking at how, f I don't know if I should trade him or not, but looking at how fast he's been going down, um, I don't know if I have any other choice other than to trade him right now or as soon as possible, so. Uh, let's just simulate this one game and then you let me know in the comments what you guys think of the situation with Shea Weber. Let me know if you think we should trade him or what you sh you think we should do with him. So let me see. Okay, for a period here, 0-0, zero, zero, to shots. Pretty defensive game it looks like. Let's have a big second here, boys. We do that. Ehlers and Kokaniemi score. Mike Condon looks like he's in net, 19-16 to 16 to shots. This episode, every single time I've done an in-game simulation, we've had the lead going into the third and we've lost it. So can we end this trend here? And we do exactly that. Carry Price, 23 save shutout, 2 to nothing win. So it's nice to see. First line produced, second line produced as well. Nick Ehlers is happy finally. So and we have a place in the, in the Atlantic top three. But obviously, we've played a couple more games than the rest of the teams, but... Uh, we're looking pretty decent in my opinion. So um, let me see actually before I let you guys go what the contracts are looking like, who we're going to need to sign in the next couple years. So Duran, we still have for another two years at a pretty steal of a salary. Uh, we're going to have to sign Udon. So how much would Udon want? So 1.5. Does he want to come back? He does want to come back. So yeah, right. Yeah, he does want an extension. So let's try and sign him right now at uh 1.375 for two years this guy could be a steal on the third or fourth line lekkonen now how much does he want 1.5 does he want to come back yes he does but we'll see uh ryan paling also needs a contract so is he gonna i don't th i don't think he's gonna grow very much so let's offer him yeah one year 1.7 whatever and I think that's our team here. I don't think we have to sign anybody else. We have pretty solid uh, cap situation, in my opinion. We still have nine million in cap space, so we're looking pretty decent. Lekkonen, I mean, I could sign him for for four years at one point three two five. So I mean, that could be good. Let's just do three years at 1.325. I'm pretty sure that's a pretty good steal for an 80 overall. Um, if you can get those guys signed and over with, I think that could be uh, something good for our team. So let's simulate a couple days, and then I'm going to end it here, guys. So Tuck and McNabb and Ryan have been traded to, Ve or to Columbus for a first in Nyquist. Okay. Nicholas Ehlers, uh, Nikolai Ehlers, sorry, is upset that you yeah, broke with a promise. Once again, this, once again, this. Very perfect. So, even though he's playing uh, almost 20 minutes a game, he's still going to say that I broke the promise, which is completely wrong. So, 
Charles Udo has come back with the team. Okay. Ryan Paling as well. And Nurturi Lekkonen as well. So we signed the three players um, there. Let's see here. I think I'm going to end it here. Let me just show you once again the trade block really quickly. And then you let you decide what you think I should do with the team. So I'm just going to go pretty quickly. Lenholm is on the block though, guys. So if you guys think I should trade for him, let me know. He's currently injured though. So enough to keep in mind. And he's also going to be a UFA. So let's keep going here. John Merson. You guys can see the players. I'm not going to have to go over. I'm not going to go over them one by one or team by team. But you guys see the players. You can pause it if you want to. But mainly the player that is um, worrying me a little bit is Shea Weber, like I was saying. Look at this. Uh, Ryan Suter is the same age as Weber. Basically the same contract, but he's. it looks like he's managed to keep his 85 overall, which is kind of annoying. Weber has uh, gone down pretty crazy. Uh, it's been crazy as decline. So, yeah, it's definitely worrying. And he's he's listed as a top six. So we're definitely going to have to do something about that. Because uh, we don't want, like I said, we don't want a player like uh, Weber being like Marco Eduardo Vlasic here. 81 overall at 7 million. So if we can get rid of him right away, maybe at the draft or in this trade um, deadline, you let me know. But we got to keep in mind that we're also playing for um, a playoff position Pedersen's still on the block, which is kind of crazy. Stone is also on the block. And you guys can see the other teams. So that's going to be the trade block. Going to show you the standings once again. One last time, I should say. So, yeah, we're at 71 points. Um, five behind the Lightning and seven behind the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, yeah, and uh, the Red Wings are two points behind us with one game less played. So it's definitely going to be tight until the end. Let's see what the Metro is looking like. So 68. So, yeah, it's going to be really, really tight, like I'm saying, uh, until the end. Uh, if we need to bring uh, reinforcements, you let me know. That's, and you let me know where we need reinforcements. I'm showing you the lineup once again. And, yeah, uh, Weber, like I'm saying, has gone down. He's not, not producing the way he should be. Only 20 points. He only produced 22 points last season, so that may be an indication as to why he's dropping so much. Uh, and then, yeah, that's the rest of the players here. So you let me know what you think we should do. I think we're, we've addressed our offense now. Our top six looks filthy. Our bottom six looks filthy too, but now our defense, now that Weber has gone down from an 87 to an 83 in like two and a half seasons, it's pretty worrying, so... You let me know, leave it down below what you think, uh, who I should be going for, or if you think we should just stay pat and not worry and just um, go with the team that we have. So you let me know in the comments section below. Leave a video of a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't done so. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.